Hello, everyone. Welcome from across this gorgeous planet. We are one church, many paths, one mountain, where our mission is what Barbara Marks Hubbard and Dr. Mark Goffney call the planetary awakening in love through a unique self symphony. Together, we declare that the last day of the old face of evolution is honored as the first day of the new face of creation. I am Christina Tehel, the co-executive producer along with Krista Josepha and Kirsten Zohar, and I am so delighted to be here with each and every one of you today. I welcome all the new people. Please do share that you are new in the chat box or wherever you are listening. We want to hear from you. When you do chat, chat to everyone by making sure that your chat settings say all panelists and attendees and not just all panelists. Use the chat function to say hi, to let us know where you're from and to resonate the Dharma. In one church, many paths, one mountain, we're connected, we are whole, and we are expressions of the entire process of creation. We are activating a new humanity and we are awakening as a new species. Homo amor, the fulfillment of Homo sapien. We are church, a synagogue, a mosque, a temple, a zendo. We are all of it. No one is excluded. Everyone is included. And we come together to attune to the evolutionary impulse, awakening within us. Welcome home, everyone. We are overjoyed to be with you in week 204. Let everyone know about One Church, Many Paths, One Mountain. We are doing this primarily through word of mouth. And I can say again and again that leadership every week around church is a sacred opportunity. On YouTube, we are One Church, Many Paths, One Mountain. On Facebook, we are facebook.com forward slash onechurch.world. Right now, we are streaming live on both YouTube and on Facebook. So take a moment, copy either of the links from the Zoom chat box or wherever you're watching from and share those live links on your favorite social media channels. After church, we will send you an email to invite your friends and family. I want you to forward that email right after church. Spend time on our website, www.onechurch.world. On the top menu of the homepage and on the bottom of each page, you will find our membership link. With that, I give you a little bit of what to expect during today's communion. We begin with a Dharma recap, then Dr. Mark sets our intention. David resonates the evolutionary love code we are working with. We move into prayer, then evolutionary sermons with Dr. Mark, and often with a piece from Barbara Marks Hubbard. Then Krista invites us to commit our outrageous acts of love and to contribute our gifts to this revolution. And then we bring everyone on when we close for our goodbyes. Starting in two weeks, 
the hour right after our live broadcast on Sunday, September 20th, we are offering a special invitation to take your seat at the table of history as a revolutionary and global activist. In these first principle deep dives, Dr. Mark Goffney will apply first principles to public culture as a response to the pandemic and the crisis of intimacy happening in the world right now. Mark wrote what he called evolutionary love codes. Mark and Barbara studied the codes together, often comparing them to Barbara's own 52 codes for conscious self evolution. These codes grew out of their radical commitment over a hundred collective years, crystallizing the new story of humanity. Quote, evolving the course of consciousness and culture, which is the source code of love, unquote. Each church is a standalone and every week's church builds on the week before. One church, many pass one mountain is radically committed to telling the new story. So here goes my Dharma recap from last week's one church, many pass, one mountain, on the personhood of cosmos, restoring intimacy through prayer as protest. Religion has many shadows, but spirit is much more subtle. The great traditions at their best had an enormous amount of subtlety that we need to transcend and include, to create a new language of spirit, to create new subversive vocabularies that are first principles. This is our revolution. We are in this insanely gorgeous, ecstatically urgent, utterly necessary adventure that's necessary for the survival of humanity, for the thriving of life on earth, and for possibly life in the universe. We are shocked by this, but we can get used to anything. Getting used to it is exactly what we don't want to do. We want to break that sense of the regular, of the routine in which we're asleep. We want to actually step into the center, demanding a seat at the table where we are so committed, opening our hearts so deeply, being outrageous lovers, reading day and night, integrating, making that Da Vinci move at this time between stories and this time between worlds. We're doing it because it needs to be done. No one appointed Da Vinci. It gives us great pleasure to have this privilege. Human beings do participate in divinity. Prayer is the intimate communion between the divine and human, between the infinity of intimacy and the intimacy of infinitude. Divinity is the force of Eros, always seeking deeper coherence and wider intimacies from quarks to culture and beyond. It's bonds of allurement that hold separate parts and larger wholes. It's true on the molecular level, on the atomic level, on the biological level. It's true in the entire world of matter. All of reality is seeking more and more coherent intimacy. When we're protesting, there's a protest that challenges divinity. We don't only come to prayer as supplicants pleading, but in the interior sciences, prayer itself is a form of protest. We challenge God as part of our revolution. We both partner with the divine and we protest at the same time. The voice of protest is the voice of the divine speaking through us. Evil is a failure of intimacy. And it's only when we restore the intimacy in the act of protest that we can actually live our lives as revolutionaries. Prayer as protest. God, show up. Be here. 
turn your silence of presence into full presence. We demand your partnership. We love you so madly. You've got to heal it. We demand that you hold our hands. God, we can't do it without you, and you can't do it without us. With that, I invite us to more deeply enter into the holy and sacred space of one church, many paths, one mountain, and I turn my word to you, beloved Dr. Mark Goffney. Oh my goddess, beloved Professor Christina Tahel Amalam, right? It is so wonderful to be with everyone. Oh my God. And can we, when we set our intention, can we be setting intention by a placing of attention? We set intention by placing attention. And let's find it in the chat box and let's find each other in the chat box. We're in Labor Day weekend here in America. So I know a lot of people are away and I got a lot of notes this morning from people to say that they're going to be with us next week and we're listening later in the replay. Lots of us here around the world. Right? Wow. Let's fall in. Let's fall on each other, as it were. But fall on each other in the sense of falling into each other's hearts falling into each other's arms, falling into each other's open fields of activist, protesting, revolutionary presence. And we do the setting of intention not by adding information, but by invoking. We invoke the depth of reality as we know it. And we place our attention and I just want to share something, which is about how we set intention by placing attention, because it's so big and it's so powerful. And let's get audacious here. Let's get fierce here. Who you are, who you are, who we are, is where we place our attention. So you can either be in life in the missing tile syndrome. There I am, I'm in one path, many, right? Right, no, it's actually one mountain, many paths, right? right? Many paths, one mountain, we gotta get the one and the many straight, right? We can be deep together in evolutionary church in one communion and one love, one communion. Right? And we're in process, we talked last week, we had a meeting of lots of people who showed up after service to kind of talk about our ultimate name. We're in process on our ultimate name. But we can be inside together and we can be in all of the glory and all of the wonder and all of the, the, the urgency and all of the delight and, and the deep outrageous love and, and the first values and first principles that we're articulating. And then we get stuck because there's a tile that's out of place. One tile's out of place. Wow. Wow. Christina Amlon, right? I thought I didn't like her blouse, right? In the Dharma recap. Sorry, Christina Amlon. We love your blouse, but right, you know, or Mark, you know, why is he wearing a black shirt or David, right? Or, or, or we liked this word or we didn't like that word. And then we lose our focus and all of our energy gets drawn into a vortex of a missing tile. And then we pour our eros into being right about whatever our issue is. And then we lose ourselves, right? And then, oh my God, and then our open heart. And then the children all over the world that we want to hold hands with. And, and the old people that we want to hold hands with. And the pandemic that we want to potentiate into new possibility. And the promises that need to be kept. And the shimmering joy that's the inside of cosmos. All of it disappears. And the way I step into this revolution, and here's my promise to you, our promise to each other, the way you, we step into this revolution, the way we take our seat at this table is the way we take our seat at every table. So this is an invitation to me and it's an invitation to you. Right? This is our life right now. Our life's not next week and our life's not the week after. Our life is right now at this moment where the world madly needs us. The world needs our audacity. Can we catch that? Who can catch that? Who can catch that now? The world needs our audacity. I want to catch that now. Just to feel that the world needs our holy audacity. The world desperately needs us to be here every week. Right? Many paths, one mountain. 
in this da Vinci moment, in this time between worlds, in this time between stories, to articulate new first values out of which we can actually construct a new story. It's time for a new story. In philosophy today, at the leading edges of philosophy, right, where I know most people don't read, there's a few of us weird in the world who are writing and reading at that crazy edge. There's what they call today the ontological turn, right? It's barely in the literature. You won't really find it any place. But the ontological turn meaning there's a realization growing from different quarters, and we're central. We're central in that ontological turn. I think that we're actually one of the most important voices in the world. And I want to say it audaciously, I don't know of a place in the world that's articulating a more coherent and better and more critical story based on first values. So we're central in this and we're privileged to be, right? And we're responsible to it, but it's part of a larger movement, this ontological turn, which is this realization that the, that the deconstructions of post-modernity went too far, right? Right? It's not just that we're present to the movement. I think we, we are, we're at the center, we're the beating heartthrob, and we're actually rippling out right, into this movement. Right? And we're moving this in reality. And people like Alfred North Whitehead were part of it, and people like Charles Sanders Peirce were, were, were beginning it. And my partner and evolutionary beloved partner, homemade Barbara Marks Hubbard, was, was a deep partner in it. And my, my, my dear friend, Ken Wilbur's, part of this conversation, right, in a real way, but it's a critical conversation, right? We've got to actually revision the cosmos. And the cosmos is much wilder and more wondrous and more magical, right, and more real, right, than we thought it was. And we actually abandoned the cosmos. And we reduced the cosmos to a particular story, which is we are material beings that are over when we die, and all the other stuff is just kind of fringe stuff. We're the only beings, intelligent beings in the cosmos. The only way we can talk to each other, right, is through very limited physical ways. We've dethroned the notion of an infused creative divinity in cosmos. We're by ourselves a lonely speck in the world. And I want you to know who was the greatest exponent of this, and he did it beautifully. He was just dead wrong, was Carl Sagan. How many people have, have, have heard of Carl Sagan? Carl Sagan, Cosmos. Carl is, it was a wonderful man. Carl is the best exemplification of the, the, the attempt at dignity within that, the position I just articulated. And it's a, it's a cosmos that's ultimately empty, we're an irrelevant speck of dust, right? In this 100 billion galaxies or even multiverse, right? The notion that we would ascribe any sort of ultimate meaning, right? To what we're doing is absurd, an act of hebris, that we need to move beyond. And of course, Sagan is moving directly out of existentialism, but that movement, that actually infuses landmark and the form, right? Meaning is not real, it's just what you create. No, that's not true. Meaning is real. And we actually can talk to each other across cosmos, right? I have a friend, a, a, young, a young man in Belgium, right? I won't say his name. He's 12 years old. And I'm, I'm doing, talking to him every couple of weeks these days, right? And I can feel him across the world when he's having a good week. Why? Why can I feel him? With no communication. Because there are invisible lines of connection every place. It's a wild cosmo erotic universe all the way up and all the way down. And actually articulating this new story, knowing our place in this new story, actually begins to be the refashioning of the world. And I want to give you just one example. Why is Donald Trump the president of the United States? Okay, and I'm not going to take issue on conservative or liberal issues. I happen to be a traditional neoconservative on a number of issues and an ultra-liberal on other issues. And an anyone who tells you they're a conservative or a liberal on one side or the other has stopped thinking. You actually have to look at each position carefully and integrate a larger and more interesting position and not parrot old positions. It's actually knowing how to gather information is a different conversation. However, I think tragically today, I think we can all pretty much agree across the spectrum, is that Donald Trump is tragic. He's a tragic figure. Right? Problems don't begin with him. The breakdown of America didn't begin with him, right? Our real issues don't begin with him. 
It's kind of like the Donald Trump Osama bin Laden. We have someone to kill, right? No, that's not true. The structural issues, the second shock of existence, catastrophic risk, existential risk, right? all of that's got nothing to do with Donald Trump. But Donald Trump is an expression of a broken system. He shouldn't be present in terms of leadership, integrity, ethos, values. How did Donald Trump become president? I want to follow this, okay? I want to follow this. And Joyce, he is president now. Let's be serious here. Okay, he's president now, okay? Right? How did that happen? It didn't happen because bad people voted for him. It didn't happen because, it didn't happen because, oh, the Russians meddled. That's not why it happened. It happened because the liberal media was in the red, and Barack Obama himself pointed to this, right, obliquely at the last White House dinner. The liberal media, CNN, for example, right, CNN, covered Donald Trump insanely. The liberal media in general, the print and the electronic media was in the red. Donald Trump generated ratings. He generated ratings. Stay close, friends. Joyce, focus with me. Okay, focus with me, right? Don't go off, right? Focus with me. He got elected president. Who cares where he got elected, right? right? He's president of the United States, last four years. However he got elected, right? Focus, focus inside. Because otherwise you're gonna, we're going to miss it, right? So CNN covered him incessantly because he actually took CNN from being a loser to a winner. Right? They were in debt. They were about to break, right? And he put them from in the red to in the black. So CNN made a decision, right? They made a decision. And their decision was the win-lose metrics of our success story, right, is more important than the larger good. I want everybody to get that. It's not just that CNN made that decision. The liberal media, up and down, and again, I'm a huge liberal on so many issues, but made a decision and that decision of the win-lose metrics up and down the system of the media, as Barack Obama himself pointed to, actually elected Donald Trump president. It, it's such a big deal, you gotta get it. In other words, the way our system works, and Barbara and I have talked about this together for the last 10, 20 years, right? the win-lose system, every department's win-lose. You gotta be a success. To be a success means you win, someone else loses. It's evaluated. Right, by a metrics, the metrics is status, right, financial gain, commodification. And everyone's playing in that system one way or the other, whether it's spiritual teachers who are commodifying spirit and selling it, right, whether it's corporations, whether it's individuals, whether it's whether it's let's get this NGOs, liberal NGOs. It's not a conservative liberal issue. That's not the issue. That's a huge mistake. That's the polarization, right, of reality. It's not about that. And there's fabulous conservatives in America, George Will, Charles Krauthammer, and there's fabulous, gorgeous conservative thinkers all across America, and there's fabulous liberal thinkers. That's not the issue. The issue is it's a broken system. The system, it's a win-lose metrics all the way up and all the way down, rooted in a separate self and in a materialist, dogmatic, implicit assumption right, of the cosmos. Now, what Trump does right, is he makes absurd, right? He exemplifies to an absurd, grotesque sense, this notion of win or loser. So he'll, he'll even say, right, veterans of a war, why well, those guys are losers, why'd they fight? But, but you gotta understand, Trump is actually a gross expression, right, of the deeper structure of the system itself. Right? That's what he is. The system generated Trump, not a couple of crazy villains in Russia, right, who obviously, right, did some bad stuff, Right? And not a bunch of crazy bad retnecks in America, the bad people, right? Hillary Clinton's terrible phrase, the basket of deplorables, disastrous phrase, horrible. That's another us them phrase. That's not what, it, what happened is a broken system, not a conspiracy theory, but a broken system and a broken story, right? Actually elected Donald Trump as an expression while well, it's broken in the story. So do we need, for example, in the United States, and I know many of you are around the world, but do we need around the world to replace Donald Trump as president? Yes, we do. Am I making sure to register to vote to vote for Joe Biden? Yes, I am. Of course I am, right? Because that's obviously necessary, but that's not going to get us home, friends. It won't. It won't get us home. The only thing that's going to get us home is going to be articulate, right, a new story of a cosmos that lives in us. 
where I actually begin to know. I begin, my friend Joyce, most awesome one, I begin to feel it in my body. Right? The cosmoerotic universe is alive in me, in person. Evolution lives in me in person. The deepest heart's desire of the infinity of power and intimacy that generated the Big Bang is alive in me. I have one question I ask. What does reality need for me in the very next moment? That's the only thing I've got to ask. That's the only question, right? What is the deepest heart's desire of all cosmos uniquely configured as me in my unique configuration, my unique configuration of intimacy, desire, and consciousness? What does, what does reality need as me? What's the next comment reality wants me to make in the chat box? How am I standing, right, for goodness, for truth, for justice, for beauty, right? How am I alive, right, as the eros of the cosmos flowing through me Right, completely madly committed right, to creating a better world in every place I can do in my unique circle and embassy and influence, beginning with, beginning with, wow, many paths, one mountain, this revolution that's our revolution, how do I make it mine? How do I step up? Right, how do I say, oh my God, right, this is our gospel, this is the new gospel, and the new gospel is us. Right? We're, we're, the gospel is the good news, and the good news is the new story. Right? And how do I actually... How do I actually step into that story, become a teller of that story? How is my voice imprinted right in the noosphere? Right? Wow. How do I make this revolution mine? Okay, that's what the whole thing's about. Everything else is a detail, right? Everything else doesn't matter, right? We're between utopia and dystopia, right? We started in 2016, right? We started together, a whole bunch of us. Lots of, lots of us are here. And I, I try and never use the word you. There's no we and you. It's us. It's us together, where it's us, U.S., unique self-symphony. And it's us, it's we, we're a we space. We did this because we want to blow the world open. And this year, we're going to take a lot of steps. And we're going to start in two weeks from now, we're going to start our first principles. And we're going to be up-leveling in lots of ways, you know, with music and with, with just a thousand ways we want to up-level this year. And anyone who wants to play, find Krista. But oh my God, this is ours to do. We have a seat at the table. We have a seat at the table. It's our table, right? Reality needs us. And if we can get that every week anew and we can drop into it deeper and we can articulate new and deeper first principles, right? And we can tell the story and we can gather the resources and we can begin to feed the hungry and we can begin to enact, right? A new vision of reality. We're, we're going to be the difference. We're going to be the Archimedean lever that changes the world. That's what we're here for. We're here for that level of revolution. So friends, friends, are you ready? Can I ask that question? This time I'm going to do it as a you, but I'm included in your you. There's no right. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are we ready? Are we ready to play a larger game? This week, as we begin this Labor Day weekend in America and in Europe and in Asia and in wherever you are in the world, are we ready to play a larger game? Are we ready to participate and to be the evolution of love? We are ready. Oh my God, we're in and we are ready. And we're turning to David and Davis, but David right from Cleveland, Ohio, pour your energy into this code. So it just, it just blows our hearts open. We turn to David, who's gonna resonate the code. David, take us inside, brother. Oh my God, yes. Thank you, Dr. Mark. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, good evening. Here we are in this revolution and there's always some darkness in the revolution. And I, I find that um, the only thing that keeps me going some days is this realization that I am a unique self, evolutionary unique self, participating in the evolution of God. It's the, it's the only realization that keeps me going some days, uh, not to mention the love of all these, uh, all my friends here in the revolution. So let's resonate the code. I'm going to paste it in the chat box so we can resonate along with each other. The God you don't believe in does not exist. God is not only as she has been described by the great traditions, the infinity of power, but more profoundly, the infinity of intimacy. God is the infinity of intimacy, desiring finitude. Prayer is intimate communion between the divine and the human. It is true that human beings participate in divinity, 
This is the first person of the divine that lives in us and as us. It is no less true that we are held by divinity in every moment. Every time we fall, we fall into she. This is the second person of the divine. Prayer is intimate communion between the infinity of intimacy and the intimacy of finitude. And finally, that force of eros, divinity, is the force of eros, always seeking deeper coherence and wider intimacies from quarks to culture and beyond. This is the third person of divinity. And I turn my word back to you, Dr. Mark. David, who could feel David? I can feel David. How beautiful is that, right? You could feel him. Let's feel each other, right? The universe feels, and the universe feels love, but the universe feels love uniquely as Davidness, right? So that capacity to feel each other, feel Christina Amlon, right? Feel David, and feel that love and let it blow your heart open and then pour your love, right? Pour your love in so we can feel each other. We create a field. Field theory is unbelievably important. Remember, it's a much stranger cosmos than we think. We know that things are not reality. Reality is fields and relationships. That's what reality is. Okay, so Rob, Rob from Holland just did an Amor, and Rob is awesome and stepping in and stepping up, and we're waiting for Rob. Rob, give us an Amor. Give us Rob Amor from Holland, right? One person on his piano and feel his heart. Amor, its insights are aligned with love. Yes. God, thank you, Rob. Deepest bow. Can we just love Rob up and thank Rob? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I want to invite everyone. I want to invite everyone to make it a more. Okay? And we make it a more, right? We, we do it a more chant. And if you can do it on your iPhone, you can just spend time, pour energy into it.
But right when we feel Rob, Rob steps out right from one of the people pillar kind of holding our space. And then you just feel reality being Rob and just get that. That's a quality of Robness, right? Now, Rob happens to be, you know, have a great voice and he's delightful. And, but that's not the point. The point is, is you feel love pouring through Amor, right? And you feel Robness. You feel love being Rob in a way, right? In a way that it can't, right? That no one else can be that Robness, right? That, right? Love is languaged as Rob. Right? Rob is love's dangling modifier. Rob is love's verb. Right? Right? That's what it means to be a unique self. To be a unique self is to be love's verb. Now, as you listen to Rob, let me ask you a question. As you listen to Rob, how many people confused Rob, let's see, with Mosa's Amor? No, was that confusing? Who got confused? It wasn't confusing. Who confused Rob with, let's say, Oriana and Randall and that beautiful Amor? No, was it, no one was confused about that. All right, not confusing. Right? Who confused Rob? right, with Krista's Amor. Not confusing, right, wasn't confusing at all. They were completely distinct. And you actually begin to realize as a first person realization of enlightenment, right, that reality animated by Eros, driven by love, by evolutionary love, seeks unique expression. And that literally the truth is that reality is having a Rob experience and reality needs Rob's love. Rob's love can do something in reality that no one else's love can do. And let's just get again, let's get the weird cosmos we live in. When I say weird, I mean in the most beautiful way. It's a magical cosmos empirically, right? The only anomaly in cosmos, you don't get what I mean by anomaly in science, we say, when something breaks the rules of classical materialist science, we call it an anomaly, right? It's anomalous. It doesn't fit into the rules. We're not sure what to do with it, and we usually ignore it. But if you actually get all the information available in reality today, for real, as I've had the, the delight, the honor, the privilege to spend my last 40 years studying across the sciences, across the traditions, across the interior and exterior domains of study, if you really study across the board, there's only one anomaly in the universe, and that's materialist science. Materialist science, of course, has an important truth. It's one way of looking at the world. It's one way of enacting. It's one perspective on reality that's critical. But it's an anomaly, right, if you actually think that's the world. I mean, I'll just give you the simplest example, simplest that everybody here knows. We have so much data in the world today that shows when a person's infused with love, right, a parent, right, a mother who can barely lift a sack of potatoes who picks up a piano off of her child. How does that happen? Just tell me in terms of the laws of physics. If the laws of physics were the only thing operating in the world and the laws of physics were materialist it principles, how could it be that a woman who literally physically doesn't have the strength and power, right, to pick up right, a baby off of, right, pick up a piano off of her baby, to pick her baby up, right, to save her baby's life, and it happens all the time, and we call those people heroes. We call them heroes. But we call them heroes because they're holding a deeper truth of reality. And every society has heroes, because heroes are the early adapters of Homo Amor. Did everyone get that sentence? Heroes are early adapters of Homo Amor. Homo Amor is the new human and the new humanity, right? And that's where reality is going. Who, who gets that? Who gets that sense? Heroes are the early, if you get it, write it in the chat box so we can get it, right? Heroes are the early adapters of Homo Amor, right? And Homo Amor means literally that just like matter became life and life became self-reflective mind, which is the first three big bangs, then what happened? Then self-reflective mind, the human being, then sought its own triumph, just like matter triumphs in life and life triumphs in mind, the physiosphere matter, the biosphere life, the noosphere, the world of thinking, information, right? the self-reflective mind, the three levels of reality, the narrative arc of cosmos. You getting this, everyone? Everyone say it with me. So then self-reflective mind triumphs in Homo Amor, in the new human and the new humanity. That's where we're going. So heroes are early adapters, right? Heroes, oh, wow, right? And a hero always is suffused by love. Now, sometimes it's love of country. And sometimes it's love of a country that's unjust. So you can actually, actually have heroes whose love is misplaced, right? They're, they love their fascist country and they do 
feats of heroism in battle, right? So we need to evolve love, right? Love needs to be deepened and evolved. So the evolution of love is the trajectory of cosmos. But a hero is animated by love, and then the hero actually accesses potentiated power that's not available to our ordinary, in our ordinary lives. Right? That's actually the nature of reality. That's true. And when that becomes democratized, right, when we actually all become heroes, okay, can we try and access that for a second? There's not a human being alive in reality that's not a hero. Can we find that together? Can we find that together? There's not a human being alive in reality who's not a hero. And I become a hero by living my unique life, by giving my unique gift, by accessing my unique superpower, okay? And, and there's not a person, right, who's holding this space with us today, right, in this space. There's not one of us who doesn't have literal, right, indirect access to superpowers, okay? Does that make sense, everyone? So when I go to pray, right, right, we're gonna, we, I pray for access to my superpower. And we're gonna go through, and not today, we're gonna go through next week, we're gonna deepen this code and we're gonna go through, we, we started the first, the seven steps of prayer. We're gonna actually go through all 10 steps next week. Today though, we're gonna to focus on praying for my superpower, right? What's my superpower, right? So I wanna pray for access to my superpower. And I, and I can't have your superpower, okay, right? My superpower, Joyce, my superpower is not yours. Joyce, you and I are talking today. We're always, right, someone I get to have a conversation with. So me and Joyce are talking this week. Joyce, you have a superpower, it's not mine. Right, Claire has a superpower, it's not my superpower. Right, Christina, right, you have a superpower, it's not my superpower. But reality needs your superpower. Right, that's what it means when we say reality needs your service, we don't mean in a bland, generic way, oh, wouldn't it be nice if you showed up. It means that just like Rob just did that Amor, and that Amor had, had Robness written all over it. Love inscribed its name as Rob. Do you get that? Love signed its name as Rob, but not, not love in some abstract, no, 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 the infinite reality of evolutionary love, which is the animating eros of cosmos, and cosmos is the progressive deepening of intimacies, and these are first principles of value that we'll be, we've talked about before and we'll be talking about this year, but that's the universe story, and I remember when Barbara called me the first time and said, oh my God, I just read this thing you wrote that evolution is the evolution of intimacy. It was the missing piece for me. We've got we've to bring this into the world. And so we started talking. We spent five years, the last five years of Barbara's life, right, to try and begin to land these ideas in the world. And I'm wildly excited that we're going to start publishing this fall. Like, wow, right, some of, the, some of the great new steps in the new story. And we would talk about this every day, right, every day. Barbara would call me anew, sometimes two, three, four times a day, so let's, so let's talk again. What does it mean that evolution is the evolution of intimacy? And sometimes I notice that some of us here, when we're doing this revolution together, we're, okay, we know that sentence and we kind of turn off. Barbara's great gift was to get excited and new every second. That's what it means because it's actually a new moment. It's a new moment. The new moment is filled, but not psychologically. You get what I'm saying, my friend Terry? It's not psychologically a new moment. That's not the truth. It's not just a mere psychological thing. And in terms of the way the, the structure of physics operates, right? Virtual particles popping in and out of existence in every second, the quantum foam, the quantum vacuum, vacuum. Reality is literally rebirthing itself every moment. We're literally in a new moment, a new presence of time. And time in the original Hebrew is zman, invitation. There's literally a new invitation now that never existed before. Never happened before. Like, oh my God, here I am. And then I can say, here's the word, hineni. H-E-N-E-I-N-I, hineni. H-E, anyone want to catch it for us? Hineni. Hineni, anyone know that word? It's a beautiful word, hineni. Anyone want to grab it in the chat box, hineni? I'm going to look all the way down here. Hineni, who's got it? Anyone got it? Hineni. What's hineni mean? What's hineni? Hineni means, anybody? Anyone got hineni? What does hineni mean? What does hineni mean? Anybody? Here I am. Here I am. It's here I am. I hear reality calling me and I say, here I am. Here I am. It's not about success. It's not about win-lose metrics. It's how do I sing my love song in reality? Right? How do I actually respond 
to reality's urgent invitation that I access my deepest heart's desire, which is to live the unique love song, the unique song line of my life and to give my gift and to be that quality of evolutionary love that only I can be. So when we, when we have this practice and we say, everybody, could you make an amour? It doesn't matter. Rob, again, Rob, Rob's got a beautiful voice. He's got this gorgeous beard and he's, you know, he's, he's just a gorgeous guy, right? And, and so, yay, yay, beautiful Rob. But, you know, some of us don't have a good voice, like me, for example, right? I, I, my voice is always off, right? But everyone's got a good voice. You get the point? A good voice is not, you know, a particular, right? right? A good voice means you're pouring your love into it. So I want to invite you to be a rock star. Can I invite, can we invite each other to be rock stars? Everybody make an amour, right? This week, it, whether, whether you do it with a friend, whether you record it on your iPhone, you do it with an instrument, you do it, you, you do it on a karaoke program. I don't know how to do it. Do it, right? But everyone's a rock star. We're rock stars. Be a rock star together, right? And make an amour. So we can literally have like a hun hundreds of amours, right? And, and what's going to happen is Krista is going to post the amours, right? And I'm checking the time, okay, to make sure we have time for prayer, okay? Krista's going to check, post the amours, all the amours in one place. So imagine you've got this wall of amour. Who can visualize it? Who can visualize that? Can you, can you see it? If you can see it, just write, I can see it. Right, can you see it? Can you see it? Who can see it? Who can see it? Who can see it? But let's see it together. Let's actually see it together. Let's be visionaries. Let's see it together. Can you see it? So imagine you go to a wall of amours, right? And you've got 100 and then 200 and then 300, then 400, then 500 amours. And next week, we're going to talk more about outrageous acts of love. But let's say that for this week, Right, for the next, right, next few months, and our one outrageous act of love that we can do, that each of us can do, is to make an amour. How about this, okay? I'm thinking this to myself now. I haven't made an amour. I'll make an amour, okay? I'm willing to make them, but who's going to do one with me? Who's doing one with me? Who's up? Who's a new person who's going to say, who's gonna, Suzanne, you're going to make an amour? I am. There we go. Who else? Simona, yes. Who else? Jacqueline, yes. Enika, yes. Raquel, okay. Do I get an okay, Raquel, or we get a yes? Claire, yes. Right. Krista, yes, right. Kathy, yes. Oots, right. Pray for the yes. Oots, we're waiting for your amour. Oots. Joyce, you're on, sister. Sister, we're together this year. Yes, Rob Cannon, yes, right. So amours are going to pour in. And then we go to this, imagine, imagine that this, this wall of amours gets bigger and bigger. And you can just go and see people sing amour, 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 amour. And each one, right, is a unique self an irreducibly unique expression of the outrageous love intelligence and love beauty and love desire that lives in you, as you, and through you, that never was, is, or will be ever again other than through you, right? And your unique perspective and your unique quality of intimacy lives in that more. Wow. Okay. So that's what we do when we pray. Okay. So we're about to go into prayer and we're, we're in these several weeks, we're doing this kind of end of summer, early fall, right? Dive into prayer, okay? And we're going to go through the kind of the 10 major steps of prayer next week. But, but what we're doing the last couple of weeks is we're, we're adding new dimensions. So last week, we added this dimension of prayer as protest, okay? And, and Christina Amlon, you did such a, a gorgeous Dharma recapitulation like you always do, right? So prayer as protest. Now, does everyone get the paradox in that? Who gets the paradox of prayer as protest? Right, like, what does that mean? What's prayer as protest, right? What, I should be, I should be thanking, right? The infinity of power, right? No, but I'm, I'm protesting, right? So I'm, I am God in me protests against God, right? You get the paradox in that, right? And you cannot, Lynn, right? You got it, Lynn. I can feel it in your yes, right? Right? Can you feel it? You can't get Raquel. You can't get Cohen's holy and broken hallelujah. You can't get hallelujah unless you get the protest in it. And you can't get Cohen unless you get the protest in it. We love Leonard Cohen. I love Leonard Cohen. Leonard Cohen's awesome. Leonard Cohen's coming out of a tradition of protest. And the key person who protests in the tradition, he's one of the, is Abraham in Genesis. And then there's a dude named David. I heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord, right? And you don't really care for music do you? What do those words mean? Do you feel the, the irony in that? Do you feel the protest in that? Do you feel 
Leonard Cohen somehow cajoling, teasing, protesting? Is that right? Now I've heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord, but he says to God, but you don't really care for music, do you? It goes like this, right? The fourth, the fifth, right? right? The minor fall and the major lift, the baffled king composing hallelujah. Right? So this is not an old song of pre-modern medieval faith, right? Your faith was strong, but you needed proof, right? You saw her bathing on the roof. Let's go to the chat box. Her beauty in the moonlight overthrew you. She tied you to a kitchen chair. She broke your throne and she cut your hair. And from your lips, she drew the hallelujah. Right, so this is the story of David and Bathsheba and being overcome by desire and not being able to access the dignity of desire. Right, it's an amazing story. Right, it's an amazing story. And there's this, this story in the Talmud, in the mystical text, where David says to God, David, right, says to God, he says, God, I'm going to make you a bet. It's in page 97a in the Zohar in the Talmud. Right, this, and this is what Leonard Cohen's basing his song on. Right, God says, Right, David, do you want to make a bet with me? What kind of bet do you want to make? David says, God, test me. I can handle anything. God says, are you sure? And David says, I got, I got this covered, God. All right? Imagine that Bill Cosby voice when, when Bill Cosby hadn't had such a, a horrific kind of an, and tragic right, dimension of his life when we could access Bill Cosby easily. So imagine that Bill Cosby voice, right? right? Hey, David, you know, don't make that bet. That's not a good idea. David says to God, I'm making the bet. Test me, I can handle anything. Very next day, David's on the roof, right? Right, wow. Right, your faith was strong, but you needed proof. You saw her bathing on the roof. It sees Bathsheba bathing on the roof, and she's married, and she's married to one of his generals, who's named Uriah. And David goes through a complex set of political machinations to claim his desire for Bathsheba. But it's not holy desire, it's wicked desire. It's not David at his best. It's not the dignity of the desire. It's not the gorgeousness of desire. Desire gets a bad name here. And then David realizes, right, it's a broken story. And, 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 and David fails. And then God says to David, David, look, look what happened. You failed, right? And David said, well, of course I failed, God, because God, you said I would fail and I said I would succeed. So I thought it would be disrespectful to succeed because I'd be disobeying you. So the mystical sex text says, in that moment, David protests God through laughter. What a strange story, right? Meaning, why do we fall and why do we break sometimes? And why is desire so complicated, right? And, and why is it all so hard sometimes? So we protest. There's a protest. David laughs and there's a, there's a protest in his laughter, right? And then he says to God, he says, you said, you said I took the name in vain. I don't even know the name, God. But if I did, well, really, what's it to you? And then, then Leonard Cohen gets it. As David, there's a blaze of light in every word. Right? It doesn't matter which you heard, the holy or the broken, hallelujah. Do you get that this is a protest song? Right? It's a protest song which says, even though it all went wrong, I'll stand before the Lord of song with nothing on my tongue but hallelujah. Right? Can you feel that? I did my best, but it wasn't much. I, I couldn't feel, so I tried to touch. I've told the truth, I didn't come to fool you, right? Can you feel that everybody? Can you feel what's actually happening here, right? And, and it, it's the realization that it's not easy, right? That sometimes you can't find, right? That it's a hopeless place, right? Baby, I've been here before. I know this room, I've walked this floor. I used to live alone before I knew you. And I've seen your flag in the marble arch and love is not a victory march. It's a cold and it's a broken hallelujah, okay? Right? It's Cohen's protest, writes Peter, that thrills my heart each and every time it's played. Peter, right? We can feel your realization, right? And, and just feel it. Feel the desire for desire itself and for the beautiful purity of desire. And this is my favorite part of the song, right? There was a time when you let me know what's really going on below. But now you never show it to me, do you? And remember when I moved in you. The holy dove was moving too. In every breath we drew was hallelujah. Right, right, right. The protest which says, I got to refine that time. I got to find my way back to Eden. And then God, sometimes I'm so angry at you. I'm not even willing to talk about you clearly. And I'm going to say, maybe there's a God above. But all I've ever learned from love was how to shoot at someone who outdrew you. 
It's not a cry you heard at night. It's not somebody who's seen the light, this song. It's not a pre-modern, right? It's a cold and it's a broken, right? Hallelujah. Can you feel that, everybody? Right? Hallelujah. Does everyone get that? It's hallelujah. Hallelujah means, and write it in the chat box because we've said it a thousand times and you know it. Everybody knows it. Right? Hallelujah means pristine praise. Right? Pure, pristine praise. And when it's all good, it's gorgeous, it's numinous, it's sweetness and light. And hallelujah also means broken, drunken intoxication. Right? Love is not a victory march. Right? Right? It's a cold and it's a broken hallelujah. It's protest. But here's the thing. Right? Prayer as protest means I'm in relationship. I haven't left. I'm in the story. We're together in the story. And I'm not leaving. And I'm going to be with you, God, forever. And I'm going to hold your hand. So I, want to, I, want to, and I want to ask you, friends, if you're willing to make a promise with me. But I'm going to make a promise to you. And let's see if we can promise each other. Can we promise each other that we're going to actually take this revolution and we're not going to leave? And we're not going to experience coming to many paths, one mountain, as a kind of, this is our nice new age activity and this is where we get a little, we get a little energy hit. But this becomes ours. It's our place. And can we look at each other in the eyes and say, I'm staying forever. Until the world becomes what the world needs to be. Right? I'm staying. And I'm going to be here with you every week. Right? And love's not a victory march. And it's not about having, was this an entertaining week? Or was that an entertaining week? And did I like that insight or like that insight? And we're going to do the deepest dharma and the deepest first principles and the deepest first values. And the deepest insight and dharma that I know in the world that we can do. And we're going to blow it away together. But that's, that's, that's the expression of it. It's deeper than that. It's that, right, there's a blaze of light in every word. It doesn't matter what you heard the holy or the broken, hallelujah. That we can be here together and we can confess our greatness and we can confess our vulnerability. We can love each other madly. So from that place, let's pray. Are we in? Who's in? Who's in for forever? Home, this is our home, right? We're in for forever. We're gonna do this all the way, right? This is not a commodity, right? Yes, we have to raise funds and that's critical. And yes, it's critical to become members, absolutely. But this is not a commodity. We're resourcing our home, right? We're there. We're going to love it open all the way, no matter what. Right? We're going to close and we're going to open again. We're going to reach deeper, right? And we're going to know. We're going to know that we can come closer. We can sometimes step back, but we never look away, right? We never look away. That's what it means to be in relationship to God, right? And that's what it means to know that God needs our prayer. Just like we need God's need of our prayer, right? We pray to God and God prays to us. And prayer creates God. And God is way beyond prayer. God's a figment of our imagination. And our imagination is a figment of God. And it's all so real. It's so real. It's the most true in the world. Right? Spirit's real. Intimacy is real. Consciousness is real. And it didn't emerge, right, from mere material, senseless matter. It birthed everything. So let's go to Leonard Cohen, and let's pray together like we've never prayed before. I'm, I'm so, so honored to be with you, and we're so honored to be with each other. Leonard Cohen, the holy and the broken, hallelujah, inside, all the way. Ciao. Now I've heard there was a secret chord that David played, and it pleased the Lord. But you don't really care for music, do you? It goes like this. The fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, the major lift, the baffled king composing hallelujah. 
we never prayed before, right? For our deepest heart's desire. Whatever your deepest, clarify your desire and ask for everything, right? Everything, 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 right? So here we go. Here we go, right? I'm not afraid, Veronica says, to go all the way, Camille, unconditional love, right? Krista, I pray, I desire, and all of my desire in the name of God, in the name of the intimate communion, we're communion, right, as Peter wrote, right, and we're intimate communion, right, and gratitude, and Bonnie may work in and through all of us, mother, father, God, love in us, through all of us, always. I pray to God, Veronica, to go all the way, right, who's ready to go all the way in this lifetime, Barbara's phrase, right, Barbara used to talk about, I'm, I want to go all the way in this lifetime, right, all the way in this lifetime, David, I pray for both self-renewal and self-regulation, damn it, right, says David, right, Prayer is protest. I pray for endurance, right? Right. Give me strength. I pray to realize it's my superpower and live it. Shot, holy endurance. Terry, I pray for vital good health. Terry Nelson, Terry Nelson, we're pouring good health into you. And 10 years from now, we're going to be kind of finally realizing this. We got this is a big 10 years, Terry. We're just getting started. Oh, my God. All the way. All the way. You got to work in the basketball game also, Terry. Okay, Sally. Right? I pray for clarified, non-dual voice. Amen. Right? Right? Shot to stay all the way, all the time, always. Claire, praying that every person I meet can come closer to their own superpowers. Right? Forever. Jacqueline, I pray to go all the way in this lifetime. Suzanne, I pray for intimate communion. Right? Right? Veronica, sister speaks for me. Camille, I pray overcome right? all my fears with love. And I want to invite a couple of people who are not, who are just watching. Right? So I love you madly, the watchers, the holy watchers. Can we invite a couple of holy watchers to step in? And you can totally pray at home or you can write it on a sheet of paper. But something happens, you blow something open in all of us, and then it opens our own channels, right, of, of prayer, of spirit. When we hear your prayer, Enica, right, I pray for, for revolution all the way, right? It's short, right? I pray for power, power and short. You got to stand for the beautiful ethnocentric intimacy of the world and that that place is holy. And I'm waiting for you, short brother. Christina, God, I pray you show up. Turn your silence of presence to a full presence. I demand your partnership. Can you feel that? I pray to live, Paul, to go all the way. Jamie, I pray to feel and be the infinity of intimacy for Homo Amor. Right? Yes. Yes. Paul Bennett and Carol. Paul and Carol. Right? Yes. It's great to see you. And you're going to get a note tomorrow. We've got a board meeting September 30th on Zoom. Pray for Paul's successful thurs surgery on Thursday. Wow, I didn't know. Wow. Okay, so I hope we can talk before. I'll call you, right? Mad blessings, mad blessings. Suzanne, I pray for all, right? The release of suffering. Suzette, I pray that my superpower explode in this space and blow this lifetime open. Camille, bless me with finding a great job and all my heart's desires to be fulfilled. Kirsten, God, God, us, be with us now and create with us our deepest heart's desire. Revolution now, Mosa. Mosa, it's always so good to see you. The unique voice of Mosa, 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 I pray to heal fully and soon, 
well from oral surgery and feel more vital. Amen, sister. Amen. Lynn, and here's my superpower, a unique gift. God, I offer it in love. Please use it, right? Please use it. Right? And I'm looking at new voice, Benjamin. I pray for fullness of breath, right? Oh, my God. Right, Suriano Ambro, okay? And I'm not pronouncing your first name because I don't remember the exact pronunciation which you told me last week and I'm embarrassed. So I wanna get the exact pronunciation. So, so yes, sister, it's so good to see you. I pray I know and go all the way in every intimate way and in all ways. And by next week, next week, I'm gonna have the exact pronunciation. And so I apologize. So thank you, forgive me, right? Anna, I pray for intimacy and love, right? Right, G, Mag, right? I pray for being conscious, love and freedom, Joyce. Joycey, I pray for Northern California for smoke and fire containment. Now, God, amen, right? Gabi, right, I pray for, for infinite love power, right? And let's just feel everybody. Raquel, I pray to feel deeply to live and create, right, in, in the naked communion of my naked heart, right? My heart is right, there we go, all the way, right? All the way, right? Can you feel that, everybody? Right, new person from 607, I pray for transformative insight. Right, and I'm looking for a couple of new people. Rob, right, Rob Cannon, I pray to become the musician that I am. Paul, I pray for awareness of my superpower every day. Right, Penny Lane, I pray to show up with full commitment. Right, all the way, Tom Renee, I pray that our fears of connection can fall away. Peter Goodman, in the end, right, not reaching the goal is not failure. The act of attempt, so my prayer is the action for a grand act of home Walmart. Right, can you feel that? Right, a grand act of, right, of home Walmart. Right, like, oh my God, right? So everybody, all the way, Anna, right? Suzanne, right, Kathy, I'm looking for some new voices. I pray for intimate communion with the cosmos and to know my superpower power so I can go, right, all the way. No, exochiti, I just said it wrong, give it to me. Come on, don't give up on me. Don't give up on me, sister, give it to me again, okay? I'm gonna look for it in the chat box, okay? Right, so everybody, right? We're there all the way. We're there all the way, all the way, okay? All right, thank you so much, everyone. Right, thank you so much, right? It's so good to be here. So chito. So chito. Okay, we got that? Yay? Is that good? Amen. Amen. So chito, did we get that? We got to make sure we got that. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Short. Short. Ah, oh, got it. Okay. Okay. So we get, we're good. So it's hey, so chito. Hey, so. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. So I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna practice to make sure I get it right. And then we're gonna start next week, chill. Got it. Uh, so hey, so chitzel. Is that right? Hey, so chitzel, did we get that right or not? We got it right, right? Yes, okay. Yes, yes, right, a few years. Now sure, give me, sure, give me some credit, man. It took me a few years to get Short's name exactly right. Okay, yay. Okay, without the hey, got it, okay. So here we go, everybody, it matters to get each other's names right. Okay, it matters. And it's delightful because our names count. And oh my God, I don't know a more awesome group of human beings than the people who come that all of us. We're, we're together for this revolution. We're together to participate in the evolution of love. We're together to, to protest. So have the most, 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 most gorgeous week. And a gorgeous week where you feel the pain and you feel the joy. And you laugh out of one side of your mouth and you cry out of the other side of your mouth. And then this is a big, huge year. If you want to get involved, whether it's editing, whether it's writing, whether it's transcribing, whether it's researching, right? So find Krista, right? And she'll plug you into the right place and the right way. And I'm going to turn to Krista now, and she's going to conclude us and give us kind of the map in our last minute. So Krista, take us inside, love. Take us inside. Give us that last map, right? So we can kind of see where to go and how to get in and how to step in and how to sign in. Oh, my God. Yes. Oh my God, yes, here we are. This is home, we are together, band of outrageous lovers, and we are committed every week to commit our outrageous acts of love. And this is how we share this amazing energy with the world. And to show you what that looks like, I want to show you a very short piece of an outrageous act of love that our beloved Jacqueline has shared on our Facebook page. This is what it means to be an outrageous lover. Let's look at 20 seconds of this. This is for you, Daphne.
Look at that. That is an outrageous lover. And this clip was shared on our Facebook page, which is Outrageous Acts of Love. This is where all of us share outrageous acts of love that are happening all over the world. So you can share your outrageous love story or you can share an outrageous act of love that you heard someone committed. So let's all share our love here on this Facebook page so we can see all the love that is happening in the world. And the best outrageous act of love, of course, that you can do is to come closer and to become a member. And Christina and Mark shared before, um, starting 20 September, we will start our first principles. Again, we have done a lot of our studying first principles in the summer, and we restart this 20 September. First principles and first values, a new story for a new humanity. So I welcome you to join us there as a member of One Church. And of course, the most important thing, as Mark said it so beautifully before, we are resourcing our home. That is what it means to be a member, resourcing our home. It is a way to be grateful for this intimate community, to say yes, to step all the way in and to make your contribution. And as you can see here, it starts already from $25 a month. And that way you become part of this revolution. We have an amazing online community where we share with each other. We love each other open all throughout the week. We share in our Facebook group. And if you sign up actually this week, you still get all the nine courses nine courses created by Dr. Mark Gaffney and also becoming a future human with Barbara Marks Hubbard. All of the, these nine courses are hours and hours of transmission of these first principles of the Dharma and you can study them on your own but also you can start a study group together with members like jamie is doing starting in september studying together wake up show up grow up so i invite you to become a part of this revolution of this intimate communion so we can love each other open all throughout the week and i can't wait to meet you inside thank you so much